Thank you so much, Christina, for taking the time to speak with me today about Warrior Nun Season 2. Uh, as an avid fan, to kind of geek out and get a chance to speak with you is is an absolute pleasure. So thank you so much. No, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we are getting Season 2 in just like another day. and Not uh, even anymore. It's a matter yeah, of hours now. Uh, <laughs> how many hours are we all counting collectively together here? <laughs> And um, having having gotten to watch uh, season two in advance, it's it's just it's just outstanding, and uh, you all really just uh, up everything, <laughs> up the action, up the suspense, uh, the poignancy. Uh, it just uh, it turns out tenfold uh, this season, and I want to to commend you on uh, how exceptional season two of Warrior Nun truly is. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it's always a group effort and it wouldn't have happened without every single one of the people that we had working on it. It was nice to see some familiar faces and uh, there's also some new faces. So, but everybody adds something really unique and just makes it a stronger piece altogether. I'm really happy with it. Well, from the time we got season one to now, it's been around two years ish or so. I, I don't know how you know longer for for you maybe uh, possibly filming uh, from filming, but it's been around two ish or so years. So, um, I I can only imagine what it was like to kind of jump back into a character like Beatrice and and be amongst uh, your your. Um, off-camera sister it's just as much as well so uh, did you guys keep like a group chat going throughout the you know the the time waiting to be able to film how did you all kind of keep up together during this downtime before filming began <laughs> I mean yeah obviously it felt I think the first day when I arrived back in Spain I felt very like not only foreign because I'm in a foreign place but also like I was reading the script and I was like I don't like can I still do this <laughs> Like, this feels like so long ago since we filmed season one. Um, but it, it, I think it took all of us a little bit of time, not too long. It, we just kind of all fell back into our, into the characters, which, which was a very nice and reassuring feeling that there's nothing, there was nothing supernatural going on with, with season one. Um, and yeah, we, we did have a group chat. We, every now and then we would hit, hit each other up or, or, you know, if somebody's in a city where somebody else lives, you know, you meet up, but. That's all you can really do. <laughs> it was a, it was an interesting, interesting year after after the show came out. So, definitely, definitely keeping in touch as much as possible with people whenever it's possible. Well, picking back up in, in season two and, and starting to film in in Spain, uh, once you of course you know did get to reunite, but also of course still under uh, the pandemic of things. Partially reunited. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um you know what what were some of your challenges uh in, in getting to film then uh through partially being obviously together and then of course uh, the film work itself I think well first of all it was very strange because we weren't really allowed to socialize with each other very much so we maybe seen each other in passing but it wasn't until later on in the shoot where we were actually allowed because the the Spanish health laws changed that we were actually allowed to hang out a little bit more. Um, and no, it was very strange. We were doing table reads on Zooms when the other person is literally in, just across in the other room behind a wall and you can hear them saying their lines and you know you're responding to them, but they're over there and they're over here too. And you're like, this feels very impersonal and, and odd because why can't I just put on a mask and face shield and go sit and uh, across the table? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think the, the table reads were very strange. I think when we got on set, I mean, everybody was very good about trying to keep all of the protocol in, in, in place and try to keep us safe and try to keep everybody as safe as possible. Obviously, if somebody gets sick, the schedule is thrown off balance. So it, it doesn't, that was a big no-no. Um, but yeah, I, I think we just got on with it really i we tried not to think about the restrictions so much and just tried to be there to work and really just get the work done because that's what we we're here to do and there was nothing else to do <laughs> because you couldn't do anything else well part of uh, of season one and of obviously extending into season two has always been kind of like the landscapes also behind 
um warrior nun and getting to see um season two we get a lake and then they're supposed to be in the alps and then they you know back to spain it's the kind of globe trotting that we get uh as part of the warrior nun verse yeah. um what was it like uh getting to uh to see these beautiful landscapes or at least uh glimpses of of what we get um and and kind of playing into how that landscape also tends to kind of be a character in itself throughout this series at times yeah no i mean we had some incredible locations i mean we start in the swiss town and we there is a town kind of near nearish to madrid that you walk in and it looks like a freaking swiss town and i was like what what is this the only thing we had to add were the big mountains. I'm like, there are already these huge hills around us and it completely felt like we were in a different country, except everybody around us was still speaking Spanish. Um, so it's pretty incredible, the places that you can find. And even the, I mean, they built the incredible set of, of Adriel's cathedral. And, but that building in and of itself is is real. It's a real building. And it, I mean, I was like very, very surprised. I was like, you could find a strange building like that. And then there, obviously we went to the Prado Museum and that was that was interesting. We spent a night at the museum. Nothing came alive except uh, the script. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, no, I mean, when, in your, when in, in your life do you have the chance to be in the Prado Museum in the middle of the night for an entire night pretending to be somebody else stealing shit? <laughs> I know it's like Mission Impossible oceans 13 like, yeah that was Very such well. an amazing part getting to see that yeah i mean dodging lasers and and technology to put out lasers and mission beforehand to scope out the place i'm like nice if i did ever rob a museum that's probably how i would do it <laughs> legal disclaimer i'm never going to. <laughs> sister's honor <laughs> But that uh, that whole montage of yeah, with the with the lasers and and being in the museum, it, it's just gotta feel like pinch me. But like, where am I in a sense at the same time too? Yeah, I mean the same thing with like when we filmed the final scenes at, at below Adriel's Cathedral, that huge hallway where the where the arc sits. I mean it's it look it was this huge concrete building, and then they just put up the the arc and 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 I was like wow this is and it echoed in there and it was just cold because even at the outside it's warm it's a concrete building it keeps all the air and it felt like you were underground very chilly very haunting <laughs> we talked uh, a little bit about the uh, the Swiss aspect I mean the we pick up with Beatrice and Ava in 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 the Alps supposed to be in the Alps mm -hmm. uh, but not in a Maria on trap right, kind of no. we we wanted domestic Ava and Beatrice and, and we get a little bit of glimpse though of the, of um their and not not necessarily domestic but at least a, a more casual side of the two together how does their bond um in these moments in the, in the beginning moments of season two kind of help to build what we get to see even further throughout the season too because um they obviously are quite close knit um and the training that goes on between the two of them is an important factor for Ava for season two specifically well I think obviously just them being able to spend a lot of time just the two of them on their own is you spend enough time with somebody you get to know them better you know so and there was already that inkling at the end of season season one so you know I don't think I don't see any reason why that wouldn't just naturally grow when you spend enough time with someone that you like um but yeah I think Beatrice through that gets she gets to you know like Ava more love Ava more and she becomes more protective and um I think for Ava it's it's the same but in, I mean, she shows it in a different way. I really love like the um, interplay between the, the two that really has built from season one that's kind of like tension mixed with tenderness. Mm -hmm. uh, like they're each always trying, to me, they each always 
seem to sort of be like vying for the next breath or vying for the next i don't know like <laughs> the next energy exchange or something, you know like what i don't know like the connection like the next portion of their connection they're always um mixing this tension and tenderness together um that sort of becomes like a little nice like inter you know like symphony or you know like kind of orchestra between the two of them that that we get to watch play out <laughs> so beautiful yeah, yeah i think the the way that alba and i play off of each other we we do this nice little push and pull um but nicely and it, the way that it was written between us i think you know, it made a nice balance of of humor and 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 tenderness and tenderness with humor and and jealousy with humor and um, frustration with humor and and frustration with tenderness and all of those things that are wonderful but you know mind-boggling and and you know you want to pull your hairs out sometimes with the person you love but it doesn't change the fact that you love them yeah it's their like kind of personal love language in a way yeah. um that I really um I really really admire and, and um appreciate because um yeah I mean you we, we always like to jab at the ones we love it's kind of like you know pull the pigtails or you know like poke yeah. something you know that you admire you always kind of like try to get under their skin in a sense um and they do that uh even Beatrice like get each under each other's skin in, in both ways <laughs> yeah. yeah no I think it's very much like a very primitive kind of natural exchange that they have I, I don't think there's anything you know they're they're each not trying too hard it just kind of naturally comes along that that's the kind of dynamic that they have um for Beatrice, it comes from, I want to keep you safe and I'm training you hard. I'm making you do these things because I want to keep you safe. And for Ava, it's like, well, I want to do all these other things and this is frustrating, but I also love you and I want you to be safe and I want me to be safe. So there's that balance. It's always that push and pull. Yes, the they challenge each other so well um, in such different ways, but they... The connection again the interplay that kind of comes in that like vibrates off of each other is just like so complimentary <laughs> that it's such this it's like a dance and and i know there is a dance <laughs> that we get to yeah. see a real dance that we get to watch uh, ava kind of um let uh, help beatrice kind of relax or you know become a little bit more um out of her her cocoon that she has to keep her <laughs> really like she really yeah. I mean obviously self-protection that we know about um, yeah no I think that I think the the kind of interplay that they have even though it's sometimes you know they're nagging each other or it's a little bit you know sometimes it gets a little tense <laughs> but I think all of those interactions only serve to strengthen their connection I think that's the wonderful bit about it. Like none of those interactions ever takes away from their connection. It always, in the end, strengthens it more. So, yeah. But yeah, the dance scene that was fun. <laughs> yeah. I remember shooting it, and they were just like, "Okay, now stare at her." And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> no, it's just a, it's a really nice scene. Um, again, also a way that we get to see a different side of Beatrice or more um casual like I keep saying but it's more like with a, a little bit less of a guard she still got her guard yeah it's um, a little more loose right she gets a little bit loose yeah and, um and it's nice that Ava is the one who can can really bring that out um in her and then that dance moment um it just feels like so natural like can we stay in this moment can't we just stay in this moment forever uh yeah. and that's that's why it's also heartbreaking when they talk about it later on and we could just go back and dance at the bar mm -hmm. but that's that moment's gone just like in life those moments you never realize you're in the good old days until they're gone i know and i mean ava keeps bringing that up a lot i mean she says obviously that to to you know be just like we could go back to the bar we can serve like sloppy drinks and do things like this and that and then yeah. um she says it again um in the season finale to miguel you know she's like we could go back to the <laughs> live in the bar and he's like 
another person who was like, no, we can't. No, it's gone. It's gone already. Yeah. Some so can never get back. It's it's um it's a it's a nice reflection though um for Ava though to like want to be to be the one who wants to go back there and like bring people she cares about with her or, or, yeah. like, and kind of see that that's kind of like her comfort. Yeah, and I think that was a safe place for us for for them. I think that was a safe place for Ava, and I think Beatrice felt pretty safe there. Otherwise, she wouldn't have gone to the bar and danced, and it wouldn't have gone that far. But I think there's always going to be like it's a it's the human condition. You're always going to yearn for a place or a time when you were you you felt safe, and especially in times of extreme conflict or upset, you, that's that's the place you're going to want to go back to. But most of the time, you realize it's not there anymore, and you got to make one, make a new one. Oh, the fleeting moments that we get to reflect on and wish we could replay forever, but that's the beauty and the bittersweetness that life offers to us at the same time. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, like, I was just going to say the word bittersweet. I think there's a lot of bittersweetness right at the end and even through the entire entire series. Um, I think there's that feeling of nostalgia a little bit for something that you don't really know what it is and then bittersweetness because you've lost it before you even really had it. Yes, especially the very end, the season finale, which I watched a lot. <laughs> I watched it many times. Oh yeah, I made myself cry and I was there. <laughs> the, the moment that, I, that there's the montage of, uh, again, uh, we talk like a, a dancing and interplay like between um Ava and Beatrice in that in the moment in the finale where she's like I did this Ava's like I did this so that you can live and I want you to live and Beatrice is like no I can't and she's like okay but you have to and she's like no I can't <laughs> and then they end up obviously uh in arms together um and then there's like a little single tear that we can kind of see dripping down Alba's face and I'm like I don't know yeah. That's right, I'm gone. I'm dead. <laughs> okay, the, the show is over now. Okay. <laughs> I didn't ask you to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You guys are supposed to make me feel things. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, no, I literally, like, when I was watching it, I cried so many times, and I was like, why am I crying? <laughs> I'm making myself cry. This is literally, I do this in my everyday life too much. I don't need to do this to myself with my work. <laughs> like, I make myself cry every day. <laughs> But I do love the the little affections that we see that are, I guess, kind of hallmarks or senses, uh, it seemed to me, at least as a viewer, um, that we get between Ava and Beatrice. Um, it's a lot of face touching, yeah. a lot of caressing. Is that something that is like a, a you and Alba type of love language or that you kind of inter you put into these characters? Or is this something that was part of the script that um, they do a lot of touching and then... We didn't really discuss it. It just kind of happened. <laughs> that's just that's just what that's what happened in season one. There was I don't remember there being a direction of touch her face, um, but that's just kind of what happened, and that's just kind of what we stuck with. <laughs> and that's just what always seems to happen in those situations is face touching. Um, so yeah, I mean I'm glad it's face touching, so we can you know not not anything weird. But it's a nice, like, intimate act. It's it's, beautiful. it's very, very beautiful, very sincere, very um, tender. We keep saying tender, but that's really... Yeah, you know. and I think it's also, it, it showcases, I think it's a very innocent movement. I think it showcases kind of both of their their innocence and that sort of, like, I wouldn't say naivete, but, I mean, in love, they both are quite naive um, and, and new to it. They're not you know, experienced in a lot of you know, relationships. I think it's a very beautiful way of showing that kind of newness. And because when you meet someone new, you just want to touch their face. They're beautiful to you. You want to caress it. Um, and the person you love, that's what you want to do. You want to hold their cheek. So I think, yeah, I don't know. It just sort of happened. <laughs> We've- uh... Those things do. <laughs> 
it's it's just a, a very gentle act though too like it's something that's so like very soft and pure like we talk about um so seeing that as sort of uh, continued through season two for me and then again like touch I guess sort of being a love language in a sense for them as well um because sometimes you can't I mean that words aren't enough <laughs> sometimes words just can't express yeah. certain emotions anyway or certain feelings so uh, I love, uh, and, and obviously I don't have time just to talk it, it during those moments as well. <laughs> have a huge old gush session. <laughs> so yeah, just... so I have a monologue, but I could say it with one gesture. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> we have 30 seconds. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I think, also um, is a really beautiful way to portray these characters too, that um, although, like, we keep talking about time being fleeting, but um a gentle touch really lingers with people too like that's something that stays with you and can linger so yeah. sometimes those things sort of are more intimate than words can offer yeah i definitely agree with that statement but it was also nice to see a little bit of jealous ava this season too a little glimpse of like jealous ava at the bar yeah um, where and then it's funny to me that she's telling me that beatrice is jealous <laughs> yes exactly um, it's not a one-sided thing here like no <laughs> if you recognize it you must feel it too <laughs> exactly exactly game recognize game jealousy recognize jealousy yeah, <laughs> yeah i so love that we're both we're both like giving these like side eye glances towards each other at different points and it's like you're doing the exact same thing and yet you're both completely oblivious to it <laughs> exactly um and um as much as as uh, beatrice hides herself it, it's, it was nice to see someone also reminding that stranger that comes and sits down next to me um and yeah. reminds her that um i mean there wouldn't be but <laughs> there are other friends in yeah. in the world um and sometimes you remind people that aspect but um it was it was definitely nice to see uh ava having the coin flip <laughs> in yeah that how the turns have tabled huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, I think i think that scene was a nice little you know breath of fresh air in between them being like okay well there here's something to to kick it into action sometimes you need that sometimes you're just so scared and you don't know what to do and then somebody else comes along and says something and you're like oh <laughs> i need to do something <laughs> absolutely i mean Beatrice again is someone who has hidden so much of herself or cocoons herself so much because of uh I mean we get the whole story in, in season one about you know yeah. having to, to hide yourself and you know being chastised um for being the person that's unique person or your gifts and things like you know people you love um yeah. but to see someone to actually kind of remind her like hey this is also okay because she she had that in season one with Camilla uh, mm -hmm. in a way but um she kind of needed someone who's an outsider too at the same time yeah because sometimes I feel like she also thinks oh, maybe it's all just in my head you know maybe she doesn't actually like me that much and sometimes you do need an outsider's perspective to just be like no it's just it's not just you it's not just in your head <laughs> This is actually happening and you need to do something about it otherwise you're gonna lose it so yeah well we talked a lot about ava and, and beatrice's relationship but i also love the relationship that doesn't get talked about enough of, of camilla and, and beatrice as well mm -hmm. camilla kind of feels like at times we talk about her being an observer but she also feels like the little sister in a sense uh, the little sister little sister yeah um, because she feel she seems a little bit in, in Beatrice's shadow at sometimes, but she's really um in season two kind of grown and uh, matured and, and had to adapt too because the other sisters aren't there. It's just her and Mother Superior together. Yeah. Um Yeah, I think in season two she really kind of she really blossoms and it takes it takes Beatrice a little time because she hasn't seen she hasn't seen it happen in front of her eyes. So it's always surprising when you see someone you think you know really well and then suddenly they're a little different um it definitely takes her a little time to get used to 
this this new Camilla, new and improved 2.0. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, I think Olivia did did wonderfully, and and Camilla is such a darling. We love her. Everybody loves her. I love her. <laughs> She's um, so pure and like cute and like funny. A ray of sunshine. Yeah. She's yeah. the, they have that meme that's like sunshine protector. And I feel like that's like Camilla is the sunshine protector. Like grumpy no. sunshine, sunshine protector. <laughs> also protects the sunshine and the grumpy, <laughs> like the storm. Yeah. Clock. And I think, and I think it's also like this little ray of sunshine then has to go through this horrible experience with, with Adriel that it's like, it feels like we're being at attacked on every level where all of the sisters are going through something very upsetting and most of all Camilla's getting unwanted visits from <laughs> from the self-proclaimed savior of the universe yeah. <laughs> um, so that can be a hard one to swallow but yeah when you talk about the uh, the person who's the outsider uh who is at the bar and kind of reminds Beatrice of uh, uh you know of, of things goes both ways um but I also like Camilla there's this beautiful scene um in season two where she you know says like there's no shame in it I you know you know obviously she talks about how like if you love the warrior nun you know you're gonna end up you know they never they never stay um but it's also it's it's this bittersweetness again yeah. Uh, at the same time it's a reminder that you know she sees them she sees what goes on she obviously is you know okay with it and affirms everything and you know tries to to share that with Beatrice as well but also um, a reminder to like hey time is, is of the evidence maybe you want to walk you, you want to get you know like, yeah, if you want to do something about it you should do it now because we don't have forever um no but I think that scene is is beautifully cut with the next scene where Beatrice walks into the courtyard and sees sees Ava um levitating and it's I think it's that those two scenes those two moments that actually that leads directly to what happens at Adriel's cathedral between them um the the finale the kiss I think if that if Camilla hadn't said that that might have not happened so yeah Beatrice she's, is she's who I think responsible he's, yeah she's she's the original ship mom <laughs> yes exactly she's the og like amatrice fangirl that uh that but now kiss <laughs> yeah, exactly exactly like kiss 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 <laughs> <laughs> and i uh i i just love that uh that she's kind of been like the like we said like the the, the big one that's like pushed beatrice that's kind of like needled her too and said like I see this it's okay another person because obviously like we said people have told Beatrice her whole life that you know this is shameful or you should hide this or you know especially throughout religion too obviously <laughs> um this yeah. is something that hasn't been accepted but uh it's another person who is of the faith that that kind of reminds her that this is these feelings or you know whatever what you're going through or what you're experiencing your love it's okay it's it's not bad it's not a sin it's, you know you need to act on them now yeah no I definitely feel like Camilla is kind of like a linchpin for all of us she keeps all of us sane <laughs> um that's why it's so worrying when stuff starts happening to her but um in the end she she flips it incredibly um in an incredible way she flips it on Adriel so. yes she's a smart girl she's a smart girl she she holds back a lot, but she's very smart, very clever, at Camilla. A little firecracker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout uh, the season, there's a, a constant theme or of the concept of obviously faith, uh, an ideal of faith. And uh, it becomes even explored, obviously, further this season. And I wanted to kind of ask how this theme of faith tends to be a shield and a sword at times uh amongst the sisterhood but also maybe a double-edged one at the same time too at times yeah i mean definitely you know throughout season two you see people using faith in multiple different ways um 
Do you see people losing faith? Do you see people, you know, adopting a new faith? So I think it's, in part, season two is also an exploration of, of how your faith can change, how your, how your feelings can change on matters like that. I think Beatrice definitely is, is battling through her faith as well and in, in throughout the season I think it's once once everything you knew is blown out of the water then you're like well what do I believe in now and especially when when we learn that the prayers are being used that's a very invasive it feels dirty and invasive um that something so pure can be can be uh, flipped to be used for something so bad um but yeah I think I think just like in real life People can wield faith in multiple different ways, for good and for bad. Um, what's important is what you do about it. Yes, it's it's definitely something that um, really tests, re really explores the boundaries of religious testaments. Um, and I, I'm Jewish, <laughs> and I like that. Um, not only do I get to learn about other faiths, but I get to explore and think about concepts of my own. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I appreciate also about Warrior Nun, that obviously there's, again, female empowerment and um, all sorts of uh, beautiful affirming um, messages, but like also that it, it really challenges and, and makes you think about your own um, religious, if we have them. <laughs> uh, kind of yeah, no, I think, yeah I think it it definitely you start um, I, I I can only speak for myself but I definitely think that season two is about yes what do you believe in to be the truth because truth is not objective and everybody has a different truth and something that they believe completely to be true and again sometimes you need to hear other people's truths in order to really decide what you believe is true. Most of the time, that's the case. Well, um, it's, it's, a, it's just an, an, an incredible season. Um, and there's also a lot of parallels from season one that we get to, to witness, as, uh, especially in the finale, uh, Beatrice and her big corridor moments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, and a lot of uh, incredible training. Um, there was a video that we got to see, sort of a glimpse of small behind the scenes uh, yeah. today through Instagram um, and stuff. And I wanted to ask a little bit about um, the training that we got to watch, or well, not to watch, but the training that you went through um, this season and how it kind of either was different or you know more training or and what really went into uh, making this big moment for Beatrice at the finale. Well, I mean, most of the, a lot of the fight scenes, we, excuse me, the, we trained quite hard. So we did a lot of our own stunts, which was really fun. Um, I mean, even as soon as we, we all arrived to Spain, we were all training with a personal trainer, you know, strength training, all of that, lifting weights, just to make sure that we were in good shape when we actually got out of quarantine and then started training with the stunt team and straight into learning big choreographies. I mean, like my favorite fight is, is the church fight, definitely. Um, because it was like, it was all one. We all did it in one shot from beginning to end. You only had about, I think we had three or four benches and then one of them mysteriously broke. Um, so that was one chance down. Um, but yeah, like that fight scene, we we had to do it from beginning, of the end, be 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 beginning to the end at each time. So there was like, if anything went wrong, you had to start over um and that's the stuff I really like where it's like you gotta just just do it and we we definitely practiced that one a lot we learned it in little little chunks and then we just put it all together um and I think everybody gets to showcase you know their skills and their whatever training that we did which is a lot um and the stunt team was incredible they were so supportive see <laughs> seeing me flailing around doing things that i've never done before that they can do in their sleep um they were incredibly patient and incredibly kind um and i think the result is amazing the hallway fight scene is joe my stunt double um yeah, i mean she's incredible she's like a real life superhero i see her doing these flips and stuff and i'm like i 
I think I would throw up <laughs> from that many twirls, but you no, know, she's incredible. Really, really incredible person, really incredible woman. Um, but yeah, really fun, really fun to do all that. I think it was it was awesome that we got to do a little more than than we did in season one. That they really trusted that we could do it. I think we pulled it off. I mean, it's absolutely badass. I I feel like everything has kind of amplified in season two the the tension, the suspense, the action sequences. Uh, everything has really kind of leveled up um, when we get into season two and it just continues like the pacing everything just really feels so um, so much like you're trying to catch up or catch your breath at times Um, yeah I think that's I think that's a really important part of it I think the 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 editing and the the pacing is really really good because it does kind of keep you a you have to just click the next episode because otherwise you feel like you're going to fall off the wagon Number two, when you're watching the episode, everything's just happening, happening, happening. There's never a gap where I feel like I'm loading, you know, the little loading sign never comes up. You're always just like happening, 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 story, fight, story, fight, like it goes. It's, I think it looked pretty seamless. So it does. I felt it's like, how do I parse out watching all of this? Yeah, I was watching it. I I I was like, I need to go to the bathroom. Can I pause? And I was like, no, I can't. I need to, like, I, 15 minutes left on this. I just need to finish the episode. Then I can go to the bathroom. <laughs> I, I did get the screeners, but then I was, like, I tried to parse it out. Trying to parse it I'm like, okay, I got to watch up to, like, four. And maybe that's, like, okay. But then I'm like, oh, no, four is too much. And then I'm like, okay, I can't, like, watch the finale. I, like, I had to, I had to force myself to kind of wait a, at least... A few days or more and people are like how do you do that i'm like because it just means it's over like this special series can't be over like i there's no more after i put on episode eight and that's not fair and then you know we have to wait even longer for season yeah three. then you just have to go back and watch it again <laughs> i just sort of stayed in certain moments yeah like i, yeah. I sort of stayed in certain moments uh feeling the the Ava of it where I was like can I just be in the Alps literally yeah (laughs) can I just go back to my comfy place (laughs) no keep watching (laughs) exactly press play you have to (laughs) or else (laughs) yes or else Simon will be mad at me (laughs) yeah I I, I think if um I think if we do get a season three, I think there's only bigger and better things. I mean, there's references to the Holy War that's coming. I mean, Rhea has been shown to the world. So I think it would be an interesting exploration of possibly the other side, what happens over there. That would be, you know, very interesting to go over there um, and see what, what, what Ava goes through while she's there. And um, I mean, well, they Michael's character says that he always exists there. So. Yeah, he just talks about this like nothing. He was like gone for however many years he said, and it was like you know two minutes or whatever. Like Lilith was over there for like seventy seconds or something. Julian says, and then it was like really like three years or something, whatever. What you know, like it was, but um, it was seven. I think I believe it was seven point three seconds. Like yeah seconds and like three seconds but... 103 minutes like two and a half hours or something yeah, yeah. but it rejected julian it rejected um lilith so i would wonder like how would they be able to get through to the other side like are they would they be able to get towards that other realm and how would they accomplish that but i feel like there's some smart people <laughs> they would have yeah. I mean, semantics were involved in the fin- you know, in 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 Adriel's uh, finishing that there's yeah. some, something within something like I trust in Yasmin who's got you know like all the text. Yes. and I would, I would trust Yasmin with my life. <laughs> yes, she is. Uh, there's there's something in a scroll somewhere or something in yeah. history that she. If anybody texts. knows, she knows. <laughs> exactly so um, let's pick back up and and pick yasmin's brain and see yeah. how, what she knows about how to get back because uh in yasmin we trust yeah i think i think that's another journey that's incredible in, in this second season is yasmin's journey from the beginning of 
I'm a Coptic nun and I just need to tell this to the warrior nun and I don't do any fighting and I don't know anything about this um, to actually becoming one of them and being able to stand on her own and keep her own in a fight and overcoming her fear. I think that moment in the in Adriel's cathedral where she's with Camilla is really, really important where she, she's like, I'm scared. And Camilla's like, yeah, me too. But we still have to do it. <laughs> That's what life is, isn't it? You're scared shitless and then you're like, but I still got to do it. Right? I mean... You're never ready. Only prepared. Exactly. And um, yeah, I like that uh, <clears throat> Yasmin becomes a, a sister warrior and they're like... Is that how you do it? Mm, not really, but no, that's not at all how you do it. <laughs> that's that's not the initiation, but it works. <laughs> yeah. We'll take it. War time. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and it, and it's just a, again another important scene um about uh the bonds that the sisterhood shares together and and community and faith and um trusting people uh because she, she like you said just she's scared like she's very scared throughout the entire um season but she really is another person sort of like camilla who has come into their own and uh, takes these important steps and uh steps out into the fight she doesn't just sit back but she, again she does it so cleverly too uh in, in such a, a scientific clever smart uh yasmin very yasmin way um that's very that's very uh important i think again somebody who adds another element uh, to the dynamic that this group uh, exudes. <laughs> I mean, the way that she carries herself at the at the secret conclave. I mean, it's it's an everyday question of like, you know, our skills are all different. We're all from different places. We all have different experiences. But when you see something done that's wrong, will you be able to stand up and say something, even if you've been told to stay quiet? As she did <laughs> in the most incredible way. <laughs> Well, um, season one laid the groundwork for this, again, beautiful relationship between uh, Beatrice and, and Ava that we get to see. And, and season two really solidifies the the love that they do, in fact, share and exchange, get to exchange uh, so dramatically, but uh, just, again, bittersweetly uh, at the same time um we've there's so much politically that goes on and it continues to go on uh especially now um you know it's it, it's very important to see representation and have uh relationships like Beatrice and Ava's relationship um and get to see that portrayal and, and see those types on on screen and have that type of um important uh, LGBT community represented and uh, wanted to talk a little bit about for you in, in the portrayal um, of this beautiful relationship you know how much it's meant to you getting to portray this this dynamic um, and really also the importance like we talk about of of having having expressed on screen not just in subtext uh, you know we got a little bit of subtext season one but now this is actually expressed um, yeah. explicitly <laughs> expressed at that. Yeah. Um, no, I think it's, I, like you said, I think it's extremely important. I, our film and TV has to reflect our world. If it doesn't, then it's failing. And our world is expanding, and so should, so should television. Um, so I think it, I didn't realize how much it would mean to me, I think, when I started, uh, when we started filming season one. Obviously, I, I knew that it was important to do it justice um but i didn't expect the the wonderful feedback from everybody um a lot of heartfelt messages um, i think that really highlighted to me how how much it did impact people and how important it is that 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 is you know shown and represented um yeah i think for season two you know people i know people have been worried that it's uh like not gonna actually happen but it did so it was a little slow burny but yeah you can something good is not always had and enjoyed straight away sometimes you gotta wait delayed gratification is a thing <laughs> and we got it so yeah no I think I think everybody gets a little bit of something to to chew on in season two little little snackies here and there that are not 
subtext subtextual that are very much explicit. Yeah, I'm um, not to talk about just Netflix, but there's a lot of networks that have been canceling their queer series. Mm -hmm. And um, now is the time, and I think obviously it's been again two years, but now I feel like it's a pivotal time, and it's sort of a, a greatly apt time at the same time to have um, Warrior Nun come out um, for these and have again the affirming community, um, have the relationship being portrayed on screen again, not subtext, um, and something that the fans have been able to root for since season one. Um, talk about delayed gratification, but uh again you know like nobody like if they got together in an instant it wouldn't be Beatrice and David. so it wouldn't be and it wouldn't be like you said it would it wouldn't be satisfying I mean we want that yes but um it just speaks again to um the connection and bond and dynamic of the relationship between Beatrice and, and Ava that it comes at this specific time like again also like each one sort of being stubborn in a sense like we see um, Ava trying to write Beatrice a letter, but she's kind of like abandons that letter um, before the big fight and, you know, yeah. at the cathedral and all that. Um, but, you know, like with, again, uh, queer series being canceled, um, this is to have Warrior Nun and, and have this significance. It's just, uh, it's important timing. And I think uh, the representation that it brings, obviously diversity, uh, seeing, you know, women of color, um, and having that relationship portrayed on screen through LGBT relationships too is, is very significant and uh, commendable to to have that aspect as well. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm you know I'm very grateful that they were able to to have that those components. I think it it wouldn't be the show that it is without them, and it it really does you know create a much more worldly um, impression and. Yeah, I think it's it's important for everybody to to see themselves represented. It's, it's the world we're in. <laughs> the inclusivity so, that not. we get um, within Warrior Nun is just it's just amazing and 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 very also important to to mention as well. Um, we, like we talk about the community and sisterhood, but the diversity and the inclusivity is is also a really a, a beautiful and important um, hallmark that mm -hmm. also is. Uh, really grounded in the series too so i'm i very much appreciate all who have uh, had a hand in producing and writing and portraying uh these these characters and and this sharing this important series um likewise i'm like thank you simon and zach and everybody <laughs> <laughs> well just my my final question would really be you know if there is anything that you would hope the show or this season specifically maybe imparts on the fandom what would you hope kind of lingers or um, carries with them as we continue this fight and you know social media engagement to get a season three or four or not yeah I think you know it's one of those very it's those fundamental um, messages that so many stories try to tell us it's you know trust trust in the people that are close to you don't give up you know even when everything feels like it's falling apart life has a funny way of of working working itself out if you just try your best it's all you can do is just try your best um and even if even if you don't feel like you got where you wanted to be you'll still be somewhere where you're meant to be and i think that's a big thing i think i i was left at at the end of the season when I when we finished filming was like I don't think this is where Beatrice just wanted to be but I think this is where she is meant to be as she walks out of, of the of the church um or the training ground and the headquarters at the end um I think that's where she's meant to be and everything that happened to that point just by teamwork and trying to do the very best that they could every day that they were together or apart um has led to those moments for each of the characters where they're they're exactly where they're meant to be at the end. And we learn what that means for Ava. <laughs> and she learns a, a sort of an acceptance as well in a way too, Beatrice, because uh, again, e even through the finale, she's like, "Nope, this is not happening. I'm not going to let you die. I'm not letting go of you. You're not doing this alone, Ava." 
I'm, you know, I'm not, you, I won't go on without you, like everything. And then there's a, a moment, uh, just the, the moment um, that, it, you know, Ava says in the next that, that it feels sort of resolute for Beatrice that way too, where she's like, yeah, yeah I, I, I get it. I, I am accepting or I, I have, this is my reality right now. Yeah. And I think it's very much like what she accepts and, and, and does what Ava tells her to do which is you got to live your life no matter what happens. And I think she can only do that by being more true to herself. And I think that's what Ava would have wanted for her. So. Yes. And as a wise man named George Michael said, you got to have faith. (laughs) I don't know in what, but in something, (laughs) believe in something. Exactly. Exactly. With all yourself. (laughs) absolutely above all yourself that's an important message too is you yeah. know if, if no one else believes in you you have to believe in yourself because um the faith that you have for yourself is is gonna propel you it's only gonna keep you going because um you know life <laughs> life will keep going and keep throwing shitty things at you or you know cer- certain circumstances but uh if there's one thing that you can control is is the way is what you focus on and can have for faith yeah once you start to believe in yourself more and more you might notice that all those people who didn't believe in you might start believing in you too because if you don't believe in yourself well how can you expect anybody else to believe in you so most of all believe in yourself and believe that you can watch the entire series from season one all the way to the end of season two again (laughs) uh let us all say amen (laughs) amen to that from from a sister to another sister. 